How are you doing? Thank you so much for joining me. This is Mr. Woodford. Today we are diving into the final lesson of Unit 3. We have talked about adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing fractions, decimals, understanding what a rational number is, uh, applying them with word problems. And now today we're going to be talking about specifically um, a lesson that truthfully is more of the eighth grade um, standard, but I want to introduce it to you guys in seventh grade. We looked at square roots a little bit as we put them in the calculator, but I want to talk about what is a square root, what is a cube root, where do they come from, why are they there, why are they considered, um, you know, why are some considered rational, some considered irrational. So let's look at the worksheet. Please join me in looking at 3.11. <laughs> All right, awesome. You should pat yourself on the back. We made it to the final lesson of the unit. To start us off with, using your calculator, simplify uh, the cubed and the square numbers below, right? Type in negative three to the second power. What is that equal to? Type in three to the third power. Type in two to the third power and type negative two squared. Pause the video if you need to. All right, let's do it now. Uh, I, I love this lesson. I think it's a good lesson. I think it's something that should be covered because I noticed that in our exponent unit, we've talked about what this is, which is really three times three times three, but some of you guys have a hard time putting this on the calculator. And there's a little carrot button that looks like this on the calculator, right? It's a little carrot that looks something like that. Um, that is a raise button. That means to raise it up to a certain power. So even if the, I know the second power is on the calculator, but imagine I said to the fifth power, you would hit that carrot and you could put the next the, the, to the fifth power, to so the third power, whatever power you need. A, you should have got nine. B, you should have got 27. C, you should have got eight. And D, you should have got negative four. Now this one here is weird because this is not the same thing as negative two to the second power. If you notice, if you put this in the calculator, the answer will come out to be a positive four, whereas that one gives you negative four. OK, um, I want you to be aware of that. But let's dive into specifics, understanding what squares are. Take a moment to fill in the rest of this chart. I started off the first um, two perfect squares with you, showing you that one squared is the same thing as one times one, which is equal to one. So one is considered a perfect square. Two squared, which is two times two, is going to give you the next perfect square, which is four. The next one you should get is three squared, which is really, that's right, three times three, which is equivalent to nine. So you should be able to figure out all these perfect squares. And I'm gonna write the perfect squares. Please make sure you show all the work so you understand exactly how we got them. These are our 10 perfect squares. Now, there are more than this. If you notice, they're really just a number multiplied by itself, but these are our perfect squares. Now, when I say perfect squares, you should be thinking of 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. Okay? Let's talk about perfect cubes for a second. Perfect cubes. Okay? When we look at perfect cubes, there are numbers like 1 to the third power, which is 1 times 1 times 1. Notice here, we know exponents means that number multiplied by itself. That's not really one times three. That's one multiplied by itself three times, which is still equal to one. Two to the third power is two times two times two, which is equal to eight. Three to the third power, which is three times three times three, which is going to give us 27. Four times four times four is going to give us 64. And you get the idea. Fill in the rest of them, okay? Now, what are we doing today? How do we do this? We have talked about in class the word inverse. The word inverse means opposite, right? So if there's something called squares, which is perfect squares like these, there's also something called <coughs> square root. There's a, these are perfect cubes. There's something called cube root. They're inverses. They're opposites. So squares takes a number multiplied by itself to get you the perfect square. A cube, a, a square root, takes that perfect square and turns it back into its original form, opposite. Now, where do they fit in in this rational and irrational situation? When we do the square root of a, a cube root, or a, I'm sorry, when we do the square root of a number or a cube root of a number, 
those numbers turn into, they could turn into perfect squares. So for example, if I did the square root of four, it turns into two. We know two is rational, it's a whole number. Unlike if I said, what's the square root of two, that's not the same thing as square root of four. So I'll show it to you, let me write it down. It's easier if I write it down. Square root of four is gonna give us two. And you can check that with your calculator. Whereas if you put in the square root of two, you don't get a solid number, you get a decimal. You get a decimal and it's not rational. Because two, which is underneath the square root here is not a perfect square. All the ones that I circled are perfect squares, okay? So this is where we deal with perfect squares, I mean, rational and irrational. Now, the good news is this. This lesson, uh, this unit is called rational numbers. So what we're doing with today will only be rational. But it's my way of introducing you to understanding square roots and cube roots, okay? So let's look at the modeling with me quickly. When I look at A, I mean, you can look at the building vocabulary, get an understanding of what a cube root is, get an understanding of what a square root is, right? But when I look at A, I see uh, this, this square root of 64. Now, how do I know it's a square root and not a cube root? If you look at B, you'll notice there's a three on the outside. The three on the outside is indicating that this here is a cube root. When there is no number there, that's telling you it's a square root. Now, the square root has a number that exists. It's just not seen. There's a two normally there. There's a two that's here. But because the square root is the more common one, we can ignore that there is no two there knowing that there really is a two. So when you see it in calculator, they don't put a two there, but really in all actuality, there is a two there. It's designed not to put it because it's the more common one rather than cube root. Nonetheless, you're asking yourself, what number multiplied by itself will give you 64? So this is a square root. Remember, squares are to the second power. So we're saying a number multiplied by itself. Something times something needs to give you 64. That answer is eight, okay? When you get to eighth grade, you'll learn that there are positive and negative versions of these. All throughout this worksheet, we're only focusing on the positive versions of this. So eight is the answer to the square root of 64. We look here and we say, okay, what number multiplied by itself? And if you need proof, you can do eight times eight, you'll see that it gives you 64. So when I do the inverse of this, you'll get eight, it'll go backwards. This is a cube root. That means there's a number that multiplies by itself one, two, three times, okay? What number multiplies by itself three times to give you 27? That number is three, okay? Three times three gives you nine. Nine times three gives you this 27, okay? I'm gonna go through a few more here because I wanna show you the way applying uh, square roots, the way of applying cube roots, and then the way of doing a little bit more than that. If you notice in C, we have a square root. How do I know it's a square root? Because there's no number on the outside, but I know that that means it's a square root. The two's really on the outside. I have a square root. Now, there's two ways to look at this. You could either try to divide it right away, four divided by nine, and then do the square root. But if you just put it in your calculator, you can just put it in as the square root of four divided by nine, but just make sure everything is underneath that square root. Or you could visualize it like this, square root of four divided by the square root of nine. When you do this, whether on a calculator you put it all in or not, you will get an answer of two over three. Now, I like to break it up like I just did because I know what the square root of four is. Four is a perfect square. I know nine is also a perfect square. So square root of nine gives me three, square root of four gives me two. But if you're using your calculator, once you put it in, it should be able to spit out two over three for you. D, notice here, this is a, a cube root, which means that we're trying to do cubes of the top and cubes of the bottom. I'm gonna separate it as well. Cube of 27 all over the cube of eight. And for some of you guys, if you're like, well, eight is not a cube number, it is. There's a number that multiplies by itself three times. Every number on this worksheet, every problem works out. That way you're not struggling if it gives you a decimal. It won't, it will give you whole numbers, okay? The cube root of 27, we know that that is three. We just talked about that. So it's three over the cube root of eight. The cube root of eight, what number multiplied by itself three times to give you eight? That's going to be two. Now, I wanna point out something. On your calculator, you hit second x squared, it gives you the square root. It does not give you the cube root. So let's look at how do I put the cube root on my calculator? 
if you look, there's another button on the calculator that looks like this, and it has an X on the outside, right? That's the button that you want to hit because then you could put whatever number you want in the front, okay? In class, I'll show you more in person so that way you make sure that you hit the right button as you put it in. E is a little bit of a composite of them, putting them both together, seeing if you can do an operation as well in the middle. I would recognize that this is a square root of four, whereas this is a cube root of eight. So when I solve it, I end up getting negative two, because square root of four is two, plus two. And when we solve that, the answer is just zero. The last one I'm going to do with you guys before I let you practice on your own, be very careful, identify if it's square or cube is F. Notice I have a square root as the first one and a cube as the second one. The operation in the middle is division. I'm going to write that as a fraction because we know fractions are really just division. So what's the square root of 64? 8. What's the cube root of 64? 4. Once again, cube root was numbers multiplied by itself three times. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. So I have 8 divided by 4, which my answer here would just be 2. Take your time as you go to do this. I like this. I think it's a nice play on it. It's a great introduction for you guys before you get to eighth grade. But I'm looking forward to helping you as much as possible. All right, that's why this worksheet, there is no homework attached. Take your time. If there's any questions, feel free to put them in the Google Classroom section in the comments. I look forward to helping each and every one of you guys. You guys are intelligent. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day.